Hi guys, this is Sarah with Raven's Crochet. Welcome back to the channel. And my furry feline Raven is walking around here somewhere. I think she's actually, um, she's been snoozing a lot today on the bed. She likes to lay right up at the pillows, right in the middle of the bed. Um, so I think she's just been feeling a little bit under the weather with the temperature change and all that stuff. Um, I'm feeling better myself. I had like the worst headache yesterday. Um, if you've ever had one of those 24 hour headaches, like your head feels so heavy and it felt so thick, like I couldn't focus on anything. It was really hard to, um, concentrate on even walking to the next room. Um, my head was so dizzy and, and heavy and clouded and it just, I, got, I don't know what else to call it other, other than one of those, one of those 24 hour headaches. Like I slept till about, I slept fine the night before. I didn't get out of bed till like. 11.45 in the morning, which is really late for me. I usually like to be up much, much earlier. Um, not too early, but, you know, at a decent time. And um, I just couldn't do it. So I unfortunately had to call into work. Really upset about that. Um, today's Friday now. I'm feeling much, much better. I did text my boss today um, that I'm available to work even though I'm scheduled off today I haven't heard anything back so apparently I'm not needed that's good there's a lot, a lot of times I might go to another store to help out because of shortages and that happens especially with COVID going around and, and all that mess I hope we're near the end I mean praying you know anyways um, I'm taking my hat off the loom I told you guys I would be back with that and I found something underneath my coffee table that I completely forgot that I had it's right there on the side of your screen I will talk to you about that here in, in just a little bit so let me aim the candle camera can't I do have I'm looking at a candle on my table good grief um, my mind is scatterbrained today too I'm still going through stresses and everything and, um, you know, there's been some negativity here and there, but it's all fun and, and dandy. And I took care of everything. So I'm just taking this off the loom. Um, you don't respond to anything negative, by the way. I never do. I just take evidence of it and, and turn it in to authorities if I need to. But, um, you know, I try to be the quiet person, stays in the background. I'm very much an introvert. And I try to find an easier, better, safer, more happier approach to resolving things. Um, and if you respond to negativity, it pretty much just, you know, you're pretty much just giving fuel to the fire and it's going to make things escalate. I'm not that kind of person. I'm like, I'm not down with that. So I take note of it. I'm like, I'm going to give it to you guys because you guys are professionals and you guys know how to handle BS because I'm not doing it. So there you go. And then I give any information, in the, but whatever, whatever. That's, that's part of the stress I've had. Mostly, um, the stresses I've had, um, you know, the loss of my friend and everything. Um, you know, been worried about his family. Um, all the posts that I'm seeing on Facebook, not all of them are positive. But um, the kids are being really positive about the yarn. And so this is a hat I just took off the loom. And the scrap yarn, waste yarn I told you about, you want to make sure it's a contrasting um, yarn. And even though it's a similar color, it, it is contrasting. It is um, a different shade. But see, I originally started with either the petal or the sand color. And this is the yarn I used by Premier. This is Heirloom Rose, Petal, and Sand. Premier Chamonique. And it's a very gorgeous yarn. It is a two weight, which works beautifully on the knitting loom. I believe uh, um, that and the three weights work the best. Um, some of the four weight yarns, especially the chunkier ones, don't do too well. I've dropped a lot of stitches using the chunkier fours. But the thinner four weight yarns and your basic four weight acrylics, Red Heart, um, Craft Smart Value. The Craft Smart Value was a little ch on the chunkier side. I was dropping stitches with this one. I actually put this, when I made the hat for this, I had to put it back on my loom three times. For the th third time's a charm, 
for that hat. I'm like, I wasn't going to do it a fourth time. Like, if, if I'm dropping stitches at the fourth time, I'm not going to do it um, a fourth time. So, on the third time, luckily I didn't drop any stitches. So, I've been hesitant on trying to make a scarf with that. So, what I wanted to do was try to find a similar color shade to this yarn um, in a similar weight yarn. Even a three weight yarn would work um, as long as it went with the with the um, jacquard pattern and I'll work up another sample of this and show you guys I might do it here in my next video for all I know I will be putting macaroon from ice yarns on this nitty loom because I wanted to see how that worked up and because it is a chunky three weight yarn but it's like um, it's it's got some fuzziness to it and it's loosely spun so I don't know if it'll skip stitches or split the yarn or what so we'll see when that happens so I did a hundred rows and I changed the colors every 10 rows. So I started with five rounds of my waist yarn and that's um, a professional way to keep your ends looking cleaner. There are lots of videos on how to do that. I did leave a link in my description box for you guys, Juju's, Juju Jojo's, um, whatever her channel's name is. She's so cute and she's very thorough. She has a camera that really knows how to focus. And she gets up close and personal with, with the knitting loom. You can pretty much see like an aerial view of it. And she shows you step by step and gives you the row counts for everything. And uh, she's very good. I've been following her videos the most online. Um, this is um, not your basic acrylic, by the way, which also you can use other yarns besides acrylic on this loom. This is 80% acrylic, 10% mohair, 10% polyamide. There's the specs. This I would do a gentle cold wash or hand cold wash and lay flat to dry. You can put this in a spin dry tub, no heat, which is what I have. So I'll put it on like a gentle spin wash. There's like a, there's like a setting on my washing machine that goes up to 15 minutes. I'll put it on maybe like three or five minutes and I'll put it on the gentle setting. And then I'll may, I might let it soak for two minutes or something. And then I can put it in my spin drub tire. Um, tumbler rinse it you know and then lay it flat to dry so that's what I would do with this hat so when you have it off the loom you just want to kind of stretch it out just gently which I've already done and your stitches really show up and tighten when you do that and this is how the two weight yarn looks I did every 10 rows I changed colors and just as a color change as I would with the with all these colors um, I did the same with my waist yarn and so this end is already prepped for you guys so I'm going to show you how to close up this end so first of all we want to turn the hat inside out I'm going to tilt this down we want to make sure that all of these ends are secure all I did was when I changed colors I just did a loose double knot very gentle I didn't pull tight on them at all but now I'm adding one more knot and I'm just going around and making sure that these knots are secure and they're not going to unravel in the work. There are a couple of places where the knots are not in line with all the color changes, but that's because I either ran out of yarn and ha I had a tangle or something that happened. And that happens, you know, sometimes you get tangled up, which is kind of what happened right here and right here, but that's okay. So just go down all of your knots and add one more just to make sure they're secure. And I saw another tutorialist do this, do this too on her um, project, whatever she was making. I think she was making a scarf and she changed colors every 20 rows. It might be on her channel. If I remember correctly, you may see it there. The link that I provided for you guys in my description box goes directly to her home page on her ch on, on her channel and then so you can click any of her videos that you find interesting that you want to learn and then I go down with a pair of scissors and I just kind of cut some of these tails away so that they're not so long I'm still leaving a few inches of tails but Cutting these short allows me to save up some more scraps so I can use it for amigurumi stuffing. So I keep all these yarn scraps. And then 
I'm going to keep them in this little tub right here. Put all my yarn scraps in here. And I have another one that I keep all my waste yarn in and my scraps of other yarns and stuff. This is the leftover jacquard yarn that I used to make that hat. It's this yarn left over. So I only needed maybe like three quarters of this skein of yarn to make that hat, which is what I'm showing you how to make right now. So now we've got all those taken care of, put it right side back out. And the side that I do not have prepped, I need to, I need to show you guys, this side is already prepped. So once you do that, you find the tail of your working yarn, which mine is cut short, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to work with that. You really want to have a longer tail, about two feet long. This is only about eight inches, so it's not enough. So I'm going to show you how to overcome that obstacle too. I thread, I take a big darning needle. I use a larger size one just because I have bigger hands. Let's see if I can zoom in some. I have much, much larger hands. I'm going to move the table forward as well. So I'm going to try to show you guys, even though you're looking opposite from me. I determine when I gently tug on the yarn, I determine that the yarn is being pulled from this direction. So I want to work in that direction. You don't have to, but that's just the way I'm doing it. Just so that I make sure I'm getting all of these loops. So I go in this direction. The yarn is coming from this direction. And as the yarn is knitted, it continuously goes in one direction all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, right? So I'm going to continue in that fashion just as it was knitted. And this first one that it's pulling from, I skip this one. I go directly into this one which is where the waist yarn tail is. So I start in there. I just go in once with my darning needle and I go in to the next one in the same fashion. And I just go in every 46 stitches all the way around. These are your live working stitches, the ones that you want to collect. If you need to count as you go around and it's helpful to you, then do so. But I, the reason I start there is because that's where the tail of the waist yarn starts. And that to me is a reminder without having to use a stitch marker. This is a reminder of where I can stop, where my last loop is. So right before, right before the tail and the waist yarn, as I come back around 40, 44, 45, 46, my 46 stitch, that'll be my last one I pick up. Then I can remove my waist yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go around and do this. And when I get a much shorter tail, which I'm about to hear soon, I will show you how I fix that. Easy fix, especially if you have leftover yarn. You definitely want a 24 inch piece on this, at least 20 inches, so that way you have enough to weave in around your entire hat. I'm not quite there yet. I can still use much of this tail. And sometimes you can gently pull on this, creating that lettuce leaf effect. You know what I mean? Making it ruffled. Um, but sometimes when you get back to the beginning, as you're coming around the end of, of your, of gathering your stitches, those ruffled edges are really hard to see and gather up your last few stitches so it's really nice to have it stretched out which me which is why it's a good reason to have a very long piece of working yarn left when you take your hat off the loom i think i accidentally cut this tail short thinking it was another tail that was going to be wasted but i still needed it i cut the wrong tail I pull up a few more stitches, gather up a few more. 
I'm making sure I'm making sure I'm not grabbing extra threads from other yarns nearby. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take my darning needle off. I'm going to have another skein of yarn sitting here, my leftover yarn. I'm just going to tie a simple knot. Just one small simple knot because we're not going to need this yarn afterwards after we pull it tight and sew it closed. So I'm just doing a simple little hangover knot and now I have a longer tail and I can thread it back onto my darning needle. And then I will gently stretch this out. And this knot will not be in my way as I'm sewing the other stitches in. And these tails will remind me of where that yarn beginning and ending is. So I can take that back out later if I need to. Otherwise, I could tie it in and just do a double knot with it. So I'm continuing around. I'm just grabbing one stitch at a time, getting all those live stitches. Remember, there's 46 on the um, Addy King Express. If you're using a Centro, you'll have 48 needles. Or if you're using a different machine, you'll have a different needle count. So make sure you are aware of that. And whilst I have the remainder of my 24 headache. It's pretty much nearly gone. My head is still buzzing, but I'm still, I can, I can focus enough to go back to work, which I'm really bummed actually that I'm not working today. Um, so having this knitting loom is really nice. I can still get projects done and all I have to do is, is, is get it cast on and then crank away and then cast off. All I do is add my waist yarn like a color change and then I continuously crank until all the yarn it, it pretty much removes itself. I don't have to cast off manually when I'm making a hat or a scarf, really. I just use my waist yarn, pulling out my tail there. Okay, I'm almost to the end. I got a few more, few more live stitches to pick up. And this yarn is easy to see compared to the waist yarn because the shade is a lot lighter and the yarn is also a lot thinner. So just a reminder, when you used waist yarn, make sure it is a contrasting color and you will be able to see the difference um, of between that and your live stitches when you go to collect them. It's much, much easier to see. Okay, stitch number 46. I'm right there, right before the waist yarn tail right there. So I've weaved that last sucker in. I can take my darning needle off and I use a big one, but you can use a small one. I just prefer their larger size ones because my hands are big. And so there's my tail now. I can loosen that up as much as I need to. So now I need to find the beginning tail. There it is. And then now I can just take this waist yarn right on off and I can rewind it into a ball and put it back in my plastic tub. Making sure this doesn't get tangled up. Probably have to slow down at this point. Making sure that tail doesn't get tangled up. Okay, now before you do anything else from here, make sure you've collected all your live stitches. This, is, this part is crucial before you tighten up your tail that you worked from, just make sure you're not dropping any stitches. And right now it's looking beautiful. You'll be able to tell like a little nub will stick out. And then if you pull on it, the little loops will all come out down one, down one line. So you see how I've collected everything. I think it looks super nice. So now I'm going to find my end and I'm just going to gently tighten. And there's a knot where I tied on the additional tail. There are those two ends. Okay, so I can take that. 
if it gets in the way, if you can't pull that through your stitches, that's no big deal. What I pretty much do is I pull this knot up like this. And then I have this long tail over here. All I'm pretty much going to do is just tie a knot right here because I'm okay with this. And this is going to be tucked on the inside later. You won't even be able to tell or see it or feel it. It's going to be bunched up in this beautiful little gathering at the top of the hat. So there's two knots. I do one more. I always like to do at least three knots because I've had just double knots un uh, unravel on me. Gently tug. You don't want to pull your yarn. This is part natural mohair. So I'm going to cut the knot off. And I'm going to take these and weave them in to the inside. Making sure I'm not going through on the outside of, of the hat. Come out kind of down towards the bottom. And before I let go, tug gently and then it disappears inside. So then I have this one left. We're going to leave that for right now because we have to close up the other end. So now we go to the other end. And I've already prepped this one. I've already weaved in around with my, with my ending tail. So now we take the um, waist yarn off. Now this side can be tricky. This is the beginning side, the one that um, we started with on the loom. And I don't like to cut my yarn if I can help it. I like to reuse this waist yarn if I can. If I can't, then if I have to cut it, so be it. I will use it for amigurumi stuffing. And the yarn is splitting right here, which is okay. I might be able to use some of the yarn later. Bear with me, please. I'm just trying to find where the tail is going to come out from on this yarn. Let me pull up a top loop here. There we go. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I hope everyone is having a good Friday, by the way. I'm trying my best. I'm getting stuff done. I washed all of my washing towels. Instead of buying paper towels all the time, I bought two fat bundles of white washcloths from the store and I use those to clean my house with. Wipe down walls, clean the kitchen, clean the bathroom, all that stuff. So I just bleach them and wash them twice. I got my dishes done. I got all my trash gathered. I'm fixing to take that out. It's um, 26 degrees today. So it's very, very cold, but it's very bright and sunny. The roads are clear. So all I have to do is go outside to take my trash out. And my dumpster is maybe 30, 30 feet away. So I didn't get much waste yarn from that. So that's not very much for waste yarn. So this will go in my amigurumi stuffing. Yeah. And... The rest of this will also go in there. I thought all the waist yarn just came off, but obviously not because that was a very, very short piece. I just took off. I could not reuse. And sometimes this happens. Again, you know, it's not a big deal. We just cut the fibers right on out. Because they being on fibers, they don't want to let go. <laughs> Something else that could also be used for a life lesson. Sometimes these twisted knots don't want to let go. And you gotta learn to let go. You can't you can't you can't hold on to what's not good for you. So let it go. I also have something religious I want to share with you guys. Um, if you are interested in, in hearing me talk about it, stick around. Um, I will of course tell you when I start talking about that. Um, it's, I watched a, um, 
video about someone who passed away, went to heaven, came back, talked about Jesus, that type of thing. I wanted to talk to you about something interesting I learned in that video. Um, and something that helped me spiritually. So if you want to, if you want to, um, hear, hear about me, talk about that and stick around. <clears throat> Hard on. Okay. So I got all the waist turned off the hat. I'm checking to make sure there's are no, there are no, um, live stitches uncaught. Making sure I caught everything and it appears like I did. So we're going to take our tail. We're going to gently, gently close it up, pull it closed, making sure that any folds and extra loops get tucked in the inside here. And now we're going to thread this onto our darning needle. Put all this back down so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm pretty much just going to check this. I do have a couple of little bitty loops that are sticking around. So I pretty much just kind of go gently past it and I gather around, just kind of go in a circular fashion. In and out, a couple of stitches over, under, if you know what I mean. Gently pull and it kind of cleans it up. Gives it a nice cleaner look and it creates less bulk. And then I go through a couple of times and I do a couple of knots. Just two. Two or three is enough. And then I'm going to go down through the center. I'm going to lay this on a surface to where my hands can rest. And I'm going to gently tug up on this fabric, making sure my darning needle only goes through the center of the hat. I'm not going through one side out the other, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go up to the same color and I'm going to pull it through, gently tug on the top center of the hat. And then we're going to follow back down, back into the exact same spot where we just weaved out from, exact same spot so our fibers are not overlapping. And try to, you know, just tug down some more making sure you're weaving in the center of your hat. You're not going through stitches to the outside. Here I'm at that color again. I'm going to weave down through. So that way, in case if I don't go down the exact same way I did, um, the fiber won't show on a contrasting color. And then, so I'm trying my very best to go up the center on the other side. And then we're going to, this is, this is actually not how I usually do it, but this is one way you can do it. Tug on that together. I pretty much fold the brim down first, folding the hat in half. And usually it's easier. Sometimes I don't think about everything thoroughly before I do a video. But these are my mistakes that I'm learning that I hope I hope some of y'all are learning with me. Because in the end, you can get a beautiful result as long as you're patient with your work. Make sure that yarn is pulled up all the way through. And then I take the tail from the other end and I hold these two together. I'm gonna twist them around my finger a couple of times. And then I'm gonna work with this the rest of this fabric here and see if I can get it to go down straight. It looks like I did go through this fabric some, which has me in a pickle, but that's okay because guess what? I'm going to cut these tails short. There's some more waist yarn. I'm going to undo these hats and I have a tail right here we're going to weave them back both together with. So I'm going to eyeball the center of the hat, I'm going to fold one inside, so no big deal, easy fix, go right back inside, take the center of that hat, 
in the center of that hat, pinch them together. Okay, so now I go back and get my darning needle and reweave this together. Going down inside the center of this hat, I need to do a knot here real quick first. Let me do a knot here. Okay, go down the center and then flip your work to the inside. Make sure when your needle is coming out that it is coming out the center or damn near close to the center. There we go. All right, back on through. I'm going to do a knot a couple of times. Oops, I just lost my needle. There's one knot. I got to rethread. This is a very slippery darning needle with this really thin 2 weight yarn. So just be patient and take your time. I'm doing one more knot. I'm going to go through one more time. This is a thin yarn, so I'm going to go through one more time and, and out the other side, and I'm going to weave in a couple more knots, and then we're done. There's one knot, and I'll probably do two more right here. One. Get in there, get in there. Thank you. And two. You just make sure you're making sure you're going underneath that loop before you pull it closed. You see I went underneath that loop that I threaded through? I'll show you one more time. So you just weave in. Weave in a spot. Come on, weave in, Sarah. Come on. Okay. Well there's okay, there's a there's a thread. I weaved under a thread. And then you pull up. Now that loop right there, that's closing in on you. You weave it right back through it before you close it. And then you tighten it and that makes just that makes a single secure knot. I do that three times before I weave in my end. And that's personal preference. You can do it twice. Just as long as you are confident that your yarn is not going to unravel from your work. So I'm pretty much done now. I'm just going to weave in my tail. I'm going down into a stitch right next to where I came up from the knot so that there's not a loose trail of yarn laying around. And I'm going just to the inside of the hat. And I'm going to gently tug, making sure it's downwards. And then you see where that tail came out of right there. I'm just going to gently tug on the yarn. And it disappears to the inside it's gone and then this is the hat this is it 100 rows changing colors every 10 rows it's reversible this pattern looks the same on both sides and it's just enough to go over your head and keep your ears warm I will be making a few hats that are more um, that are more slouchy for the boys um, I do have a few more things that I wanted to send to the family um, that I sent um, the hats and scarves to already because I wanted to make like at least eight sets. So I'm gonna f I'm gonna weave up a few more here on the on the on the knitting loom and get those out in the box mail to them next week. Um, I got this one done, twisted headband. This is one hundred. This is ninety rows, exact same concept for making a hat. Instead of folding it in half this way, and, and of course this is 100 rows, this is 90 rows. Because 90 rows is enough to stretch all the way around the head. So instead of folding it in half this way, it folds flat. So it's it's two layers, it's a tube, it's, it's, it's pretty much a tube that lays flat. Then you close in your ends together flat, you weave them together as you close your end instead of going all the way around like I did with the hat. And then you hold your ends together, kind of like um, putting two horseshoes together. And let me see if I can show you the end. I'm looking for the... There it is. Okay. I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, so your pieces are pretty much sandwiched 
together. You've got two horseshoes that are like kissing each other pretty much like that. And then you sew them together and I double knot on the, on both ends and then, then you turn it right side out. And there are tutorials um, on how to do this online and there is a tutorial for this included in the link that I shared with you guys on that lady's channel. She made a headband and she shows you how to do this and that's where I learned how to do this from her video. And the spiritual thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you don't want to watch any further, I completely understand. This is a no, no judgment zone channel and you are free to have your religion and your beliefs. Um, that is your freedom. That is your right. And I respect that. So I bid you adieu if you are leaving. Um, thank you so much for being here. Mwah. I sincerely appreciate you watching and being here. Um, please share the love. Um, now the spiritual journey um, that I watched on YouTube, it was about a man who he got really, really sick. He was in great health for pretty much most of his life. And he was in great health. And he got sick one day and um, over the course of, I think, maybe three to four weeks, um, like he would give it a few days, go back to the doctor, give it a few days, go back to the doctor. Um, he just kept getting worse and worse and worse. The doctor just kept saying, you know, rest, push fluids, you know, do your basics, take your medicine, um, you know, call me if it gets worse or if symptoms don't improve, right? Well, he ended up being in the hospital. Um, I, th I actually... Yeah, he ended up being in the hospital at some point. He was on life, like full life support. Um, he had mention of a of a truck accident, and when he got out of the truck, he was still in it. Um, he was really sick, and he said that um, he got to meet a few angels, and the things that I learned that helped me. Um, he also learned about things that helped um, mothers who have lost their babies, um, that, that there is a nursery in heaven. Um, his body got pulled upwards. He started to, um, um, you know, float and levitate. And he was physically incapable of, of getting to his truck. Um, so his body just started to float up. And he came at a crossroads where he could go good or bad. Um, he was tempted with fire and the, and the pits of hell and, and, and demons saying that, um, you know, that they were here for them, calling him by name, but he was scared and I'm not even going to tell you what he described, not unless you want to watch the video yourself. Um, but then he said, God help me. And two angels just immediately swooped him up. And then before he knew it, he was in front of, um, Jesus himself. And he said, it's not yet your time, but he described how when the angels were, um, leading him to go to Jesus, he saw the nursery. That's where babies go when they don't make it here on earth. If they die in the womb, if they, if, if they die when they're born, if they die days after, like there is a nursery up in heaven, the babies get taken care of. That was like a very, very, very sweet sentiment. Um, he did mention that babies grow three times as fast up in heaven because time is different. It runs differently. And then he said that the angels bowed to him. Like he was this man who just died. Like he hasn't been to heaven yet. He doesn't know what's left and what's right in the spiritual world. He's still, he, he just left his human body pretty much. The angels are bowing to him. And he's like, why are you bowing to me? You, you work with the heavenly father. I, I should be bowing to you. You, you. you represent Jesus. The angels bowed to him because he is still a living soul. Jesus said it's not yet, it's not yet his time. And he sent him back. The angels bow to him because he is a part of Jesus. Um, and I even read in the Bible the other day, the angels are in awe of us who are living because Jesus had life Jesus is life and we every single one of us is a part of Jesus and you know, that makes me cry um, but they're happy tears that made me feel feel much better 
and more understanding of his will and um, his master plan. Um, I don't have full understanding. I don't think none of us ever will until we get up there. But um, in, it's, it's, just, it's, it's also kind of weird to think about. I mean, I would rather be an angel. I'm in awe of angels because they're up there in heaven. They get to work with Jesus. They get to see everything. They get to help many more people. Yet the angels want to be us because we are living. We can still walk around and do things here with other living people and 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 spread the word of, of Jesus so it's like I'd rather be up there they would rather be down here it's like that's kind of weird but it's also humbling and um, comforting to think about too and um, knowing that the babies are taken care of in heaven that's that's a very very sweet sweet sentiment and and thing to know about um, uh, but uh, so he's pretty much been sent back to earth. He woke up on life support and they took the tube out of his throat and everything. They took him off the machines and and um, his family has a thing with horses. He woke up and, his, and said to his wife, I saw Jesus and he has horses. <laughs> so that was really cool. There was a really beautiful descriptive way on how he described the horses and all the colors that he saw. I couldn't even describe all the colors that you see here on earth that also reminds me of um of um how thankful i am on all the colors of yarn that we get to work with like all these amazing colors that these yarn manufacturers create and and spin up and have uh, to sell to us like all these amazing colors and works of art that people can create with all these yarns um it just it just amazes me that there are so many more amazing colors that um, we don't even know exist that are up there. Like, can you imagine, you know, when, when, when all of us um, yarn fiber artists die and go to heaven, like the, the color palette that we're going to have to work with up there? I'm just like, so that's like that. That's like the thing I'm, I'm happy, most happy about, you know, meeting, meeting my family again and reconnecting with old relatives and, and, and learning about and, and meeting my ancestors. And seeing Jesus, of course, and then getting to work with yarn fiber and their color palette up in heaven. It's like, that's all I want. I, I, if, 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 if God makes me a house in heaven, I want it to be made out of yarn. That's what I want. Yarn. I don't want anything else. I don't want crowns or jewels. I don't want houses. I don't want fancy this. Fa I want yarn. Make me happy with family and yarn and, and I'm good. I'm good. So, um, that's a happy note. I'm going to leave it there on the happy note. I hope everyone is having a great Friday. Have a great, super great weekend. I'm going back to work tomorrow. I'm so glad. And, um, I have an electric scooter coming on the way. It got delayed, unfortunately, but it's on the way. Um, so I'm excited to get that. And I still have some packages I need to get mailed out. I promise I'm still getting onto that. It's just been really rough here the last few days. Um, not being able to do anything with my headache, all that stuff. But um, I'm excited to work with more yarn. And I've got some more hats I'm fixing to knit up. and Because um, it's it's going to be an easy day. Um, it'll be nice for my head. I don't have to concentrate on stitches. So I'll just be, I'll be here looming. And... Um, I know I've been late on email, so again, please email me if you do want me to um, connect with you. I will. Um, I just haven't been the last few days because, you know, my headache and my depression and everything like that, dealing with everything. But um, I'm in better spirits. I also did want to tell you guys about this, so I'm going to tell you about you guys about this in the next video because I'm already at 44 minutes. So um, I haven't forgotten about this. I'm going to explain this and show you guys all the pictures and stuff in the next video. Okay, love you guys. Bye-bye.